Recently, we were asked for advice on hiking the Camino de Santiago. So we decided to put together a video of our top 10, or is it 11, tips. Mm, they have to wait till the end to see. That's right. Stick around. So if you're watching this, I'm sure you're gearing up for an epic journey along Camino de Santiago. Hi, I'm Cara. And I'm Rex. And we're the Roaming Round Trees. In the fall of 2022, we hiked the Camino de Santiago. It took us just under 60 days to complete. But that's because we got hurt along the way and had to take some time off. But we didn't have a big time commitment, so we just did it at our own pace. We shared our journey on our blog at theroamingroundtrees.com. I'll put a link of that in the description here so you can go check it out for yourself. And now for our top 10 tips. Buen Camino. Buen Camino. Number one, walk a portion of the trail on your own. No music in your ear, no audio books, so that you can be in silence to manifest your thoughts and what you've learned. Number two, hand signals. Car and I walk at a different pace, and that's okay. Everybody needs to walk their own Camino. But because we get such distance between us, we devised a way to check on each other without having to walk back and forth and do extra mileage. So, here's what we do. If I'm far ahead and I want to see how she's doing, I will turn around and put my hands over my head in a big O, indicating, is everything okay? And if I get one of these back from her, then that means she's okay. If I get anything else, anything, then that means I need to come back and check on her or something isn't right. So that's a good way to do it. So come up with your own hand signals. You can do whatever you want, whatever works for you. But this is a great way for you to be able to communicate with your hiking partner and not have to do any extra mileage than is absolutely necessary on that Camino. There'll be plenty of miles to do tomorrow. If you don't want to wake up super early every morning just to get to the next place to find a place to sleep, book ahead. There's lots of tools that will let you do this. We recommend booking at least the first four days in advance. And after you finally get your cadence and know how fast you hike each day, keep that going for about a three-day cycle. You don't want to book your entire trip because there's very high possibility you're not going to stay on that same cadence. Number four, the towel trick. Now, this is where you can get your clothes dry super fast by using your microfiber hiking towel. Lay your clothes down flat, roll them up, wring them out, and hang them to dry. It's the perfect trick. You can even this, use this in hotel rooms, too, with the regular towels. Number five, download booking.com straight away before you ever leave for Spain. It will be your number one tool when booking all of your albergues. The good news is the albergues and most cafes have free Wi-Fi for you to utilize. So you can make these bookings when you're done with the, your day's hike. Again, don't book in advance everything. Just your first few days to make sure that you have a bed for the hardest days on the trail. Number six, always keep your fanny pack or bum bag attached to the outside of your pack securely, but easily removable in case you stop for lunch or a coffee and you want to set the backpack down, but you don't want to leave that bag of valuables behind like he did once he was mad number seven learn to use google translate before hitting the trail you're going to thank me for this one you can make all of your bookings through booking.com email text whatever and be able to translate it into spanish and translate what they say back goes a long way when they can speak their home language and you can communicate with them that way even if you don't speak a lick of spanish this will help you a great deal. Number eight, build and carry a small med kit. Make sure you've got some betadine, some compede, lots of band-aids, because you're inevitably gonna get yourself some blisters and you, you wanna be able to take care of those on the trail. A nice foldable pair of scissors is also really important. Uh, we use jars all the time when we were taping up our feet each day. Number nine, speaking of blisters, be sure to have a good pair of recovery shoes. It can be Tevas, Chacos, Crocs, whatever works for you. And in every albergue, they're gonna have you change out of your boots. If your shoes are waterproof, then you can shower in those too, limiting your shoe 
packing to only two pairs. But you do not want those straps, those recovery shoes, to cross over blisters should you choose to wear them on the trail for recovery. Number 10. Create a playlist and let your friends and family contribute to it. Not only will you have all of your favorite songs on there, but people can add songs that remind you of them. And you can remember them along the way. Now, here's your bonus tip, number 11. Walk, walk your own Camino. Camino. So here's the thing. This is your walk, your journey. Don't let what other people are doing dictate what you plan to do. If you don't feel comfortable walking 20 kilometers a day, don't. If you feel great walking 30 kilometers a day, excellent. Go do it. If you want to skip the Mazetta, if you want to ship your bags ahead, if you want to take a cab somewhere, who cares? This is what you want to do, how you want to do it. So walk your own Camino and just be proud of yourself for doing it. This is a huge accomplishment. You want to make it to the end. These tips were most helpful to us. I hope you find them helpful to you too as you plan or embark on your journey along the Camino. If you're blogging your journey or simply posting to Facebook or Instagram, please drop your handle below. We would love to follow along your journey and offer you support along the way. Absolutely. Buen Camino.